Here are the top five tricks all good druids know in D&D. Wild Shape Superpowers Wild Shape is the most iconic druid feature. As an action, you transform into a beast of a CR equal to one eighth your level that doesn't have a fly speed or a swim speed. You unlock swimming at level four and flying at level eight. The Wild Shape feature is awesome. It's cool and really powerful. This is really powerful if you can make the most of your forms, but most players don't. So you can't cast spells while wild shaped, but you can still hold concentration on them and even activate ongoing spell effects. Example, you cast Call Lightning and then Wild Shape into an Axe Beak. You can now use that 50 foot movement speed to run circles around your enemies while still calling down that lightning every turn. This is incredible when you're fighting monsters that don't get good ranged attacks. Alternatively, you could cast Heat Metal, Wild Shape into a giant badger and burrow 10 feet underground. As soon as you get underground, you're incredibly hard to reach and damage, and you can keep spamming that heat metal as a bonus action to cook your enemies alive in their armor. It's very strong, and Moon Druids can even wild shape as a bonus action to get these combos going even faster. That means concentration spells that have an option to move them or activate them for extra damage are especially good. Things like Heat Metal, Flaming Sphere, and Moonbeam, for example. If you can use your Wild Shape to maintain a distance from the enemies you're targeting, this is amazing. Then there are some other Wild Shape tricks you need to know. Firstly, you want to grab magic equipment that your favorite beast forms can wear. When you Wild Shape, you decide whether any equipment you're wearing in humanoid form merges into your new form, falls on the ground, or is worn by the form you take. If that equipment can fit the form you turn into, it becomes a lot more powerful. Example, a cloak of protection could totally work as a cape for a bear. So you don't only look fabulous, you keep that boost to AC and saving throws even when wild shaped. Rings and magic tattoos are other items that do work in your beast form. A life well tattoo can even give your low hit point wild shapes a bit more staying power. Sometimes you need to be stealthy, but you aren't stealthy. Maybe you've even got medium armor on that gives you disadvantage on stealth checks. Well, the giant wolf spider has got your back with expertise in stealth and a climb speed, and by shaping into it, you get rid of your problematic medium armor for a while. If you're on the move, there's no reason why you shouldn't be a clawfoot raptor a creature with expertise in perception. You might have a wisdom score of 20 at level five, giving you a passive perception of 21 and an active perception check of plus 11. That's amazing. And you also get to be a dinosaur. Finally, any race or ability that gives you the option to speak telepathically is amazing for Wild Shape, because one of the big downsides is that you can't talk. For this reason, I love the telepathic feat on Druids. It gives you a plus one to your wisdom and lets you chat it up with other players while in dinosaur form. All in, Wild Shape's probably the most exciting and the most complicated class mechanic in the entire of D&D. Master it, and you are incredibly powerful, Moon Druid or otherwise. Battlefield Gods. Druids aren't just the class that get the flashiest ability in the game, they also get the biggest, splashiest spells to dominate crowds in a way that Fireball could only dream of. You are the Battlefield God. Name a type of enemy, you have the tools to shut them down. Imagine if there was a second level spell that said all enemies in a 20 foot radius skip their next turn. Well, if you're fighting melee attackers, this is exactly what Spike Growth does. They have to waste an entire turn running around it, or running through it at half speed, taking a ton of damage. That's an entire turn when they aren't attacking, grappling, shoving, or murdering you. And that's big. You got spellcasters giving you trouble? Hit them up with Sleet Storm. Now they have no line of sight to target you with scary spells, and it's a concentration killer. Alternatively, hit them with Entangle, targeting their low strength score. Now they can't run, and everyone has advantage on attacks against them. They'll be blown off the map in one round. If ranged attackers are giving you trouble, just slam down Wind Wall. It turns off all ranged weapon attacks. Instant shutdown. It's borderline unfair. The best druids know that the battlefield is their playground. It's also awesome for building combos and team strategies, which is great for roleplay and just very powerful. An enemy caught in your spike growth can be pushed and pulled around by an allied warlock for massive damage. The perfect mix of teamwork and murder. 
what D&D is all about. You can also consider the Warcaster or Lucky Feats, giving you advantage on those crucial concentration saving throws. In addition, it means you are rewarded for paying attention to the map. If you can position yourself in a way that an enemy has to run through your spike growth, you're pretty much gonna win. Forget about wizards. Druids are the real big brain casters. And if you're still worried about dealing damage, don't be, because you have an option that does way more than Fireball ever will. Let's talk. Holodeck initiated. Computer, initiate boss fight. Generating boss. Good afternoon, Mr. Shorts. It's time for your force. Yeah. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Bezos. I hated working at Amazon. Another one, another boss fight. More epic, more challenging. Riftborn protocol activated. Riftborn protocol. <laughs> That's pretty intense. This is this isn't gonna be too crazy, right? Uh, computer, uh, abort, abort, this, this is a bit too crazy. Can't abort, stand and fight, pussy. Abort, abort, it's gonna kill me! <laughs> Riftborn, the ultimate battle book is now on Kickstarter, made to amaze players with near-death, multi-wave, epic boss battles. Every unique monster has its own exclusive hand-drawn lair, is balanced for parties at low, medium, and high levels, and is a terrifying creature from the darkest depths of the human imagination. Oh god, it's a mimic with abs! It even comes with a bunch of new playable races and incredible high-quality minis. Get yours today by following the link below and terrify your players with the real epic challenge of the Rift Ball. Summoning spells. Druids are arguably the most powerful spellcasters in most games of D&D. That's because summoning spells are insanely powerful in the early and mid game, and you get all the best ones. The poster boy here is Conjure Animals, a spell so crazy strong it can actually break the game. So remember to communicate with your DM when you take this spell, so you don't freak them out with it. These spells are powerful because they put a lot of allied creatures onto the board in a game where action economy is king. If you have eight Velociraptors on your side, it's hard to lose. They all attack at advantage and things get pretty crazy. But there's utility here too. If you can conjure eight giant owls, that's aerial transportation for the entire party at 120 feet per turn. Sure, it's no teleportation, but for this early in the game, it's very powerful but the spell I really want to shout out is Conjure Woodland Beings. This lets you summon eight fey creatures of CR one quarter, and unlike Conjure Animals, where some summons are better than others and you might get a bad one, all of these are really good. Boggles spray oil everywhere, attempt to restrain enemies, and can teleport around as a bonus action. Blink dogs are god tier if you need to take down enemies hiding away at the back, because the team can teleport in and slam them with eight bite attacks. Sprites give you an army of archers, who can turn invisible to attack at advantage, and poison or even completely incapacitate an enemy on a hit. And famously, Pixies have an incredible spell list to buff you and your allies, including Fly and Polymorph to turn the party into four flying T-Rexes. They can also mess with enemies via Confusion, Entangle, and Sleep. Disgustingly strong. This is a real case of with great power comes great responsibility. Be ready to work with your DM on this and share control of your summons with other members of the party. Because if you go ham with these spells, they'll probably be banned or you'll be smushed into a fine paste as every enemy in a 10 mile radius targets you mercilessly in an attempt to break your concentration. But even ignoring the multi-summon options, some of the single summon spells druids get are awesome. Summon Draconic Spirit is a pet dragon with multi-attack and a breath weapon that you can ride. Have fun. Multiclassing. So we've already talked about how essential a druid's concentration is. It's how you pull off your battlefield control and summoning spells. So starting your build with any class that gets you proficiency in con saves is a great place to be. Fighter is the obvious choice, nabbing you con save proficiency and a tasty defensive fighting style for a boost to AC. If you take it up to level 2, you can even action surge, and nothing feels better than slamming down plant growth and spike growth in the same turn and just obliterating your enemy's movement. The out-of-the-box choice is Barbarian, 
Now you start with your con save proficiency, unarmored defense, and rage. This is amazing for moon druids, who wild shape into more powerful forms to fight. Now that bear is hitting extra hard, has effectively double hit points, and a plus two to its AC. Sure, you can't cast spells while raging, but you can't cast spells while wild shaped anyway. However, my favorite multiclass is Cleric. Sure, you missed that con save proficiency, but just one level in Twilight Cleric gets you heavy armor, super dark vision, and most importantly, advantage on initiative rolls. Remember those big impact spells we were talking about? Well, they're most effective if you get them off early, before your enemy has a chance to mobilize, so going first is fantastic. It also gets you some extra spells, like Bless for support, Guiding Bolt for some blasting power, and Toll the Dead for the highest damaging cantrip in the game. Plus, clerics also cast off wisdom, so it's really easy to make this multi-class work without gimping your stats. And then you can go to second level to get the Twilight Sanctuary Channel Divinity, which is, let's be honest, completely OP. Healing. Okay, hot take time. Until level 17, druids are the best healers in the game. I'm going there. Druids are better healers than clerics, the healing class, for most of the game. Let's break it down. Firstly, druids get all the good healing spells. Healing Word, Cure Wounds, Lesser Restoration, Reincarnate, Regenerate, Heal, True Resurrection, Mass Cure Wounds, even freaking Revivify. You even get great healing spells that clerics don't. Goodberry is awesome. There are only two spells clerics get that are even worth talking about. Mass Healing Word can be very strong, and Greater Restoration can come in clutch. Sure. But in exchange, druids get the best healing spell for its level in the entire game, Polymorph. That's right, you've got an ally who's at one hit point, who's lost their weapon, you just polymorph them into a giant ape. BAM! That's 157 hit points, multi-attack, and a 7d6 plus 6 ranged weapon option. Polymorph is god-tier healing, as well as a massive damage buff, and that's why it's usually optimal to wait until later in the fight to polymorph someone who's about to die. Now, in the late game, like the level 17 late game, clerics do take over with spells like Power Word Heal. But up until that point, between clerics and druids, it's at least equal when it comes to restoring hit points to allies. So the point is, remember you can do this really well. It's easy to get caught up with wild shape, control spells and summons, but a healing word a day keeps the TPK at bay. But if you want more awesome stuff to play with right now, grab the DM's secret weapon on Patreon for over 250 pages of subclasses, races, feats, adventures, spells, and new rules to enhance your games. Also remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and I'll see you next time.